Medieval battlefields demanded some agonizing choices. Should you strike or stab, crush heads, or separate them from shoulders? Then some crafty folks thought, why not both? So let's talk about the Flemish Golden Dog, which as the name suggests, has its origin in Flanders, which is the Dutch-speaking northern part of Belgium. As far as the term is concerned, uh, Hodendag or Hodendag in Dutch means good day, although confusingly it's also sometimes traced to Hodendage, and the term Dache can either mean dagger, so good dagger in this case, which makes some sense, you could sort of interpret it as a dagger mounted to a stick, uh, but also Dache can simply be a different form of the word Dag, day. There's also a story behind the Good Day translation. In 1302, when the Flemish militia took over the city of Bruges and took down the French garrison, they walked around and greeted people with Hordedach, and anyone who uh, replied in French or with a French accent was killed on the spot. Good day, sir. I said good day. So I guess for bilingual people, the weather forecast on that day was 50% chance of a rain of blows. Precarious precipitation, iron shower, you get the idea. Those could all be metal album names. It's also sometimes spelled Godenduck, not to be confused with the Godenuck, which is an oddly shaped cleaver from the Majin, uh, Machio, the Morgan Bible. Supposedly the Flemish themselves called it simply spiked staff. Good old pragmatism. So what is it exactly? Well, it's a tapered wooden pole, a club, really, with a spike made of iron or steel fixed to the end, usually with a metal bolster underneath, sometimes a disc, to uh, add more mass and uh, hard striking surface and to also reinforce the haft. The length is said to be between a meter and a meter and a half, although looking at period depictions, the size is all over the place. It can be anything from a cute little tire thumper to the size of the wielder. I mean, that all has to be taken with a grain of salt. They also painted mini castles with giant people on them, which is fair enough if you want to emphasize the people over the structure. But they also painted cats like this. There's also the French planson à picot, which seems like the exact same idea. It's also a taper wooden haft with a spike on top. I would consider them identical, but uh, supposedly some sources mention them separately by name. These were popular in the late 13th and 14th century and became famous in the Battle of the Golden Spurs in 1302, which took place in Courtrai, which the French call Courtrai in West Flanders, Belgium. It was part of the Franco-Flemish War, which went from 1297 to 1305. The Flemish town militia was equipped with helmets, gauntlets, maybe mail if they could afford it, and uh, they carried spears, pikes, and golden dogs. The French had armored mounted knights in addition to infantry, while the Flemish army consisted of infantry only. The cavalry charged the Flemish pike formations, but failed to break through, and many knights were knocked off their horses with the golden dog, and they used the spike to stab into the gaps of the armor. The soldiers armed with golden dog were placed in between ranks of pikemen, and uh, it's mentioned that the defenders held the pikes and the golden dogs forward. So apparently this was used first like a spear to respond to cavalry and then like a club to ascend, try to knock them off the horses and then stab them on the ground or simply smash the helmets with the business end. So the golden dog played an important role, although it was not it alone, of course, that won the entire battle. Uh, the defenders also used the marshy terrain to their advantage and they dug trenches and diverted streams. And of course, a pike formation is a highly effective defense, especially if you're reckless enough to charge it head on. Interestingly, it's said that before that battle, one mounted knight was considered worth 10 foot soldiers. And afterwards, the idea was that one foot soldier with a golden dog could take on two mounted knights. 
At the start of the 15th century, it was abandoned in favor of weapons like pole axes and lucerne hammers, which cost more but were also more effective than a spiked club. Now, you can't argue with the kind of value you're getting, considering how little material it takes, how quick and easy it is to make. Any village blacksmith would be able to crank out one of these in a matter of hours, and it has more versatility than a simple club or mace or hammer. You can strike with it effectively, you can use that against armor to dent it and deliver concussions under the helmet, or worse, even you know, internal hemorrhaging, broken bones, etc. And you can also thrust with it both against unarmored or more likely armored opponents, and also to pierce weak spots in the armor, like under the armpits, groin, neck, etc. And you could very well make this in different sizes. Despite the fun I poked earlier at medieval artistry, it's quite plausible that they had a bunch of different versions, you know, like a, a compact, short, single-handed version that could be used together with a shield, and larger two-handed ones. All makes perfect sense. Of course, it's not as quick and nimble as a sword, but it's not heavy, and you can definitely swing it pretty easily and fast, too, especially with two hands. Uh, thrusts, of course, are very fast, and uh, you can do things like knock an incoming blade aside and then come around like so you know, depending on how you hold it. If you have a longer one, you can switch grip. You know, you can change between a slower, more powerful blow and a faster, lighter hit. Pretty much decapitated. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there Stay. he goes. Stay. Chill out, buddy. It's okay. Okay, let's see. How easy is it to break his collarbone? Yeah, I can feel it. The collarbone is broken here. So not exactly a sophisticated weapon, and as said, not as effective as most pole arms, but um, definitely gets the job done, and pretty underrated for how simple it is. Also not as well known. So hope you found this interesting. A look at the Golden Dock or Chodedach, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks. In 1302, when the Flinch, Flinch. Flemish-French hybrid. They would have been deathly offended at the time, I think, upon hearing that. They would have bashed my head in with one of these for saying flinch. I would have flinched. Okay, that's enough.